Hello there. All right, brethren. Welcome to the cast and crew interviews. I'll be asking the in-depth questions you'll want to know about the people that made this movie possible. The only question I think now the viewers want answered is what the heck are you doing on this part of the DVD? At least I was in the movie. Uh, you were in the movie, yes, as a prop. But you weren't in the movie as a star. When the stars want to talk, they're going to be talking to me. So that's why I'm going to be doing these interviews. We're a double act. We're doing the interviews. That's why I'm doing the interviews. We're doing the interviews. Okay, okay. If it makes you happy, that's why we're doing the interviews. Johnny, what are we doing next? I'm just writing questions for Robbie Coltrane and Sir Michael Gambon. So this is heavyweight stuff. I've got to concentrate for a bit here, Dread. Yeah, OK. Oh, could you ask a question for me? I just want to ask them what it is like to wear a T-shirt. You think I'm going to ask Sir Michael Gambon and Robbie Coltrane what it's like to wear a T-shirt? It's ridiculous. I mean, laughing stock. All right, a suit then. Yeah, it's not bad, actually. Oh. What's it like to wear a suit? Uh, Michael, were you, were you a Harry Potter fan before you got this role? How much did you know of the Potter phenomenon? Not a lot. I'd seen the films. And I haven't read the, the other two books, read the third one, mm. but I like them very much, yeah. And, and obviously with, with, uh, with, you know, you taking Richard's place in there, yeah. I wonder how, how you sort of approach this role then. I just did it, did my own thing, you know, I mean, I, I, uh, but I do it with a slight Irish accent, which I think just seems to be right. I don't yeah. know why. It's just when I got on the set the first day, Alfonso, I said, uh, I'll just do it. And, I, and he said, uh, he came up and he said, what's that accent you're doing? <laughs> and I said, uh, well, it's a bit of Irish, you know, because I, I am Irish and I feel sort of Irish and this long beard and the long wig. So he said, all right, leave it in. No one's ever mentioned it since. And it is kind of, uh, the part, part of Dumbledore is, is a sort of, uh, a, a kind of, a classic role, isn't it? I mean, I, I know you've compared it, I think, to King Lear, I read. Yeah, right? well, you, can't, you feel a bit like King Lear dressed like that and then he's all-knowing and all-powerful, isn't he? He's, he's a bit nicer than King Lear. King Lear's a bit miserable, isn't he? Absolutely. No, he wasn't. He's not very happy. But not very good at relationships. No. <laughs> no, really he doesn't, like, he doesn't relationships. like his children, right? No, he wasn't good with kids, was no, he? No. no. Robbie, you are barely over six feet tall. In the movie, you're obviously huge. Eight foot six. Eight foot six. So what are they, I mean, without giving away too many secrets, how do they beef that up then? Well, it's mainly done with very clever camera angles. And there are one or two other tricks which I can't possibly discuss. But at any time, are you very? Have you got tall shoes to take you up oh, to yeah. an enormous height? Oh yeah, height? oh yeah. And so, what's the biggest height things. you actually physically get to? Uh, eight foot six. And how does life feel when you're walking around eight foot six? Very perilous. <laughs> because you've got all this hair like that, and you can't really see your your feet, of course. Okay, but quite inconvenient life at that height. Very inconvenient, and the, and the costume's very heavy. The costume weighs about ninety pounds, something like that. And not only does the costume weigh ninety pounds, but it's made. Of, what's it made? It's made of. What do you used to call it? Moleskin, isn't it? Moleskin, yeah. Yeah, very thick and very hot. And you had to wear this, didn't you, on the on the hottest day? It was a hundred degrees, hundred degrees in in the forest. But I have a I have a cool suit, you see. Hey. Which is yes, it's a vest, but it's got miles and miles of plastic tubing in it. Like a refrigerator. Very like a refrigerator. And then there's a, there's a box with ice cubes and cold water in it, and a tiny wee pump off a windscreen wiper of a car, oh, you know? What this is my it? question. Yes, I know it's your it question, but you let, let them answer it. Robbie, sorry, your suit. You into, of course, they dyed the vest pink, just to yeah. make me look like a complete, oh, a complete silly fellow. And, uh, but, and, and they do. They, they pump the water around, and it's extraordinary, because you, you know how woozy you get when you're really hot and your concentration yeah. goes... Uh, and then suddenly it's this shock of freezing cold water circling around. It's just... it's wonderful. Michael, how excited were the, were, the, were the young children in your life that you were in Harry Potter? Oh, well, every, I mean, every, every boy and girl I meet asks me about being Dumbledore, so I have to... I, I do my best to uh, tell them stories about it. Your young relatives, is it, is it... I mean, there must be a massive difference between that and sort of work you've done, say, doing oh, the yes, theatre and things, because yes. I would think they wouldn't particularly want to talk about they that. They wouldn't want to talk about Samuel Beckett's endgame, would they? <laughs> they <laughs> would have appealed to the, the eight-year-olds. Tell us another story about it, Grandpa. <laughs> Please tell us about Samuel yeah. Beckett. Tell yeah. us about existential alienation. <laughs> <laughs> You're really watching the kind of the, the, the kids involved in this film grow up. Is that uh, a, a strange experience? Well, no, no, not strange. Just very interesting, really. Um, particularly this film, they're much more confident as actors, but they're much more confident as people because they mm. are, you know, they are young teenagers now. And then one, one thing that came across, particularly in this film, is, is there is a sense of fun between them because they've known yeah. each other for years and they get on well. So there's a good knockabout feeling between them, which means that 
when you do get a bit of light relief from the horrible things peering in the windows and trying to disembowel you, yeah. it's, it's a genuine relief, which I'm, I don't think they could have done when they were younger, to be honest. And I suppose they're more used to the acting now, aren't they? Yeah. After yeah. three years. Exactly. But I mean, what, they, they put more time in than probably any of us, don't they? Yeah. In oh, terms yeah. of ours. And when they're not acting, they're, uh, they're doing their school studies. So it's a long haul for them. They're they, all the time. Their concentration's astonishing. If any one of those had been the wrong person, yeah. and I mean, not just the wrong person at the start, but had developed into yeah. the wrong yeah, person. Wrong, yeah. Yeah, In fact, we had this gag that we were, we were going to get, stick a, a phony moustache on Daniel and get him to turn up with a cigarette holder and a couple of babes <laughs> in a fur coat and say, my trailer is too small, love. I'm going back to it until, you know. <laughs> you the nightmare child scenario. The nightmare stuff. child scenario, yeah. OK, Head, go on. I know you've got a question. Crack away, go on. OK, great. Uh, Robbie? I think Hagrid uses the same hairdresser as I use. Do you think I need a new hairstyle? I think you might have wanted to split ends there, Mitty. But uh, no, I think it's I think it's very you. It's very you. Ah, great. All right. I'll keep it like this. Go on. Uh, you got a question for for Michael? Hello. Michael. Hello, Sir Michael. Hello. You guys are all classically trained actors. Could you get me a role as that skull in Hamlet? Yeah, I think that'd be a good idea because yeah. you'd be great as a skull. Mm -hmm. A whoever, chatty Yorick. Whoever played Hamlet would be lucky to have holding him. Lovely. Well, fair enough. Next question. Uh, Michael again. I felt like scratching my knee for the last six years now. So, for the next movie, could you get Professor Dumbledore to cast a spell to get me a body? Yeah, I think that could be done. What it's sort of body would you well, create? Long, from that? thin, distorted. Sounds like me. You finished then, Head? Yeah. Ah, for now. Do you know, it's a waste of time even asking you to do those questions. We learnt nothing. It's always about you. It's never actually anything interested in them. Well, I've had a good teacher. Pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, fellas. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> 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 <laughs>